Hi folks, welcome to Ditto Insurance. I am your host Shashank and joining me today is Supreet. Now Supreet here has advised over 4000 clients and he's taken time out of his busy schedule to be with us today. Uh, hi Supreet. Hi, good to be here again. <laughs> yes Supreet and great to have you. I'll be very honest, I read the article about this new platform that is N8CX which basically aims to automate the whole procedure of claim settlement and make it smoother. Right. Now, I honestly tell you I didn't understand a whole lot of it hmm. and I want to know in detail. Hmm. So, I have come to you. Now, help me understand hmm. this NHCX platform. Right. Uh, what it does, what can it do differently and how can it tackle the problem of claim settlement and dealing with the delays. Right. So, before we understand what NHCX does, okay. uh, we'll try to understand how the claims process is today. Okay. Right. Now, uh, maybe with an example, uh, let's say, suppose I, I know of this one scenario where uh, a person went in for a fracture and he was hmm. hospitalized for over two days. Hmm. And uh, at the time of discharge, he was told by the hospital administrator, sorry, we cannot discharge you because hmm. your insurance company is still reviewing your claim. Hmm. Now, that's a situation that you don't want to be in. So, uh, maybe uh, help us understand what NHCX can do for hmm. this person. Right. Just to uh, elaborate a bit more uh, mm -hmm. on the context there. Uh, so, let's say now I have uh, admitted myself to the mm -hmm. hospital because of, let's say, fracture, mm -hmm. as you said. Uh, and the treatment is done and it's time for me to get discharged. Correct. Right? Uh, now, I have to raise for a claim. Okay. Uh, now, uh, assuming that the hospital is in the network list of my insurer, correct. Uh, I'll raise a cashless claim. Okay, cashless is again wherein the insurance directly pays the money out to the hospital, and you, the patient, doesn't have to pay a penny out of his pocket. Correct. Right. right. Okay. Something similar. And uh, during this process, uh, firstly, we'll have to fill out a claim form. Okay. Although these days, uh, you know, this is done online as well. Okay. Uh, and the hospitals uh, are requested to submit all the reports, say prescriptions, diagnostics, diagno uh, yes. medications, Correct. and all of that. Right. Okay. So the entire bunch of uh, documentation. So basically, the health record of the patient. Right. Complete A to Z. Okay. Right. And. Uh, once this is sent to the insurance company, mm -hmm. now there's a agent sitting there uh, okay. reviewing the details. Okay, so it's it's not automated, is what you're saying. It's a person sitting behind and reviewing each and every form. Right. Currently, okay. it's manual. Okay. So one has to first check if the documents are right. Now Correct. the sources are right. Correct. Is it coming from the right diagnostic center? Correct. Uh, and then see if the cost. Uh, of the treatments or the tests are it's not inflated not inflated right uh, is it something that they uh, you know are commonly uh, occurring in in the similar cases right correct uh, and then they'll have to check uh, the policy uh, features as well right right uh, if it is covered or not perfect correct? yeah right so they'll have to go through the uh, terms and conditions mm -hmm. of the documents and then verify if let's say in the same example mm -hmm. uh, whether a fracture is covered or not Correct. Whether it comes under a waiting period or not. Correct. So they'll have to review all these details. So now the insurance company uh, will get back to the hospital mm -hmm. saying whether the claim is passed or not. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, and then the patient is allowed to go home. Okay. Right. So this is the ideal case scenario. Yeah, this is this is what usually happens okay. these days. Now, uh, first of all, it is time consuming. Correct. Um, now somebody sitting there has to review each and everything. Manual labor. Manual, manual labor. And then uh, also uh, the human error, right? I mean, that is one of the major things that, that humans can make error. And maybe sometimes the policies can be, uh, you know, the, the claims can be discarded because the insurer maybe didn't see something right. We've, we've seen such scenarios. Possible. Yeah. Quite possible. So the authenticity of the mm -hmm. whole process uh, is also something uh, currently, I mean, it takes a lot of time to Correct. eliminate certain things, right. certain risks. So, right. uh, so what this NHCX platform is actually doing is eliminating all these, uh, all these problems, and uh, it, it is driving the whole industry towards being more customer centric. Understood. And so uh, basically, your insurer, hmm. your hospital, and hmm. the labs and the patient, they hmm. are all on one single automated and digitized platform, which is NHCX. 
Correct. So, Correct. I mean, I'm, I'm not a tech guy. Okay. Uh, I don't know how exactly this platform will work. Okay. But uh, I, I did go through some uh, government websites okay. and uh, uh, what I believe is they, they are coming up with a platform where, uh, you know, it, it can help other insurance companies okay. read the data more easily. Okay. So, when, when the data is being fed to this platform, Correct. Uh, the platform has certain guidelines, certain standardizations. Okay. Uh, and uh, let's take, for example, uh, while while making the claim, mm -hmm. uh, the hospital has to, uh, you know, through their softwares, uh, each hospital, they use different softwares. Yeah. Um, Mo Mobidoc, was that the one? Uh, one of those. I think there are quite a few. Uh, okay. you know, each hospital network, they use their own uh, health management systems and uh, uh, they use different softwares. Okay. And when they're loading the data into this platform, okay. uh, it comes from different softwares. Correct. So the formats are going to be different. So Understood. yeah, okay. once it enters this platform, what it does is it standardizes the whole information. Okay. So when insurance companies or other beneficiaries, they want to access this information, it's kind of uniform. Oh, understood. So let's say, suppose hospital X is encoding a data, writing a data in ABC format hmm. and hospital Y is doing the same data entry in say DEF format. Hmm. They both put the data into the NHCX platform hmm. and what that does is it streamlines it hmm. and maybe it puts out saying XYZ is so XYZ is the Standard. Standardized form. Perfect. Okay, understood. So, yeah. this eliminates the insurers taking a lot of time to read. Okay, so this is the hospital and this is their data type and then mm. going through this. So, the system mm. basically automates the whole thing. Correct? That's correct. Okay. Okay, Supreet, now mm. talking about the adoption. Mm. Um, in your experience, do you think that insurance companies like the big players would mm. want to jump into this and uh, say adopt NHCX mm. to settle claims? I just want to hear your thoughts on that. Sure, why not? I mean, uh, if I was an insurance company, I would have loved to be uh, on this portal. Uh, it is solving a lot of problems. Correct. And at the same time, it is automating a lot of my processes as well. Correct. Standardizing and, and, mm. and also helps me tackle fraud as well. Right. Now, you spoke about fraud. I'll, mm. I'll come to that bit later. But mm. see, if I was an insurance company, I mm. would definitely go into NHCX platform because mm. uh, I think a lot of my time would get cut down by having a standard way of uh, reading a report from a patient. That's one thing. Now, fraud. Mm. Uh, how do you think that NHCX can you know reduce fraud or even detect in that case? Uh, right. I think we discussed a bit uh, on this topic earlier mm. as well. Uh, so usually when uh, you know when I'm fi filing for a claim, uh, I have to submit a lot of documents. Correct. Right. Uh, so some of the documents may be from the hospital, mm -hmm. uh, but there is a, a fair chance that some of the documents that I'm uh, you know, providing mm -hmm. could be from a third party as well, probably a third party diagnostic center. Right. Like blood uh, or urine reports. Right. Yeah. So, uh, could be some x-rays or whatever, which Correct. I had taken outside the uh, hospital. Correct. Report. So, the hospitals in, in, in a traditional system would just pass it, uh, would forward it to the insurance company. Right. And Correct. the insurance company from there on would pick it up on good faith, trusting right. that, you know, it's coming from my network hospital. So, Correct. maybe there is no uh, fraudulent activity happening. Yeah. That's how insurance companies and hospitals have been there for the longest time, right? So, hmm. the insurance companies know, right, I, I know this hospital, uh, hmm. you know, I, I don't see anything bad unless there is something seriously, seriously fishy. Uh, in, in which case, I think they would blacklist the hospital. Right. So, uh, unless there is like a pattern of events. Oh, okay. Right. Understood. Now, not, maybe, not just one, but a pattern of events. Right. Maybe Understood. the first, second time, uh, you know, maybe the hospital or maybe the uh, the th third yeah. party, yeah, they they might get past this process. Okay. Only when they see a pattern is when insurance company is like, oh, wait a minute, uh, there's something wrong oh, happening okay. here. Uh, but with the introduction of this portal, okay, uh, what happens is when you uh, have this completely different uh, standardization or guidelines, what Correct. we have been talking about. Correct. Uh, it's easier for me to understand what is happening behind the scenes. So well. it basically authenticates every single record that comes through this. Especially when my records are linked with my ABHA number. So, uh, ABHA number, isn't that the 14 digit uh, Aadhaar like number, you know, uh, a, a unique identity to say? Correct. Yeah, we'll be hearing more about this uh, you know, very soon. ABHA, 
is uh, Aishman Bharat Health account number. Correct. Correct. So it's a uh, like you said, fourteen digit unique number. You can you can just say it's like Aadhar for your medical records. So there Correct. can only be one Supreet Prasad uh, with this Aba account number. Correct. And and uh, in, in my understanding, look, I'm I'm not a tech genius, but just to understand the centralized platform. So if you walk in and then you have a health record that is tagged with your Aba account, then it's a unique id that is created and that is treated as a sole entity so you can't claim for another insurance uh, through any other insurance provider right not just that so when when i'm submitting my reports mm -hmm. right and when it's coming through this account there's a bit of validation there authenticity understood yeah yeah understood got yeah. it now with the introduction of nhcx as a platform which is basically an automation of all the documents and the whole procedure um there is one uh, segment i think we forgotten to address which is the cost cutting that the insurance company can finally look at hmm. now with the introduction of uh, nhcx if if they decide to you know adopt nhcx model it would basically have a lot of more automatic procedure and hmm. cut down on the manual labor now do you think there is a segue for insurance companies to maybe maybe lower hmm. the premium in the future case scenario not very sure about that if that's going to happen but there is definitely an opportunity i feel because um, insurance companies are saving a lot of money yeah. uh, by automating a lot of the processes you don't need a lot of people manually verifying details correct or uh, maybe people to check the authenticity of the documents correct or to verify sources correct so lot lot of these things are getting eliminated correct uh, and is in turn saving some uh, money for the insurance companies correct so that's if right. whether that would translate uh, into a reduction in premiums for customers mm -hmm. is something that we'll have to wait and watch but i i would i i would really hope that this happens mm -hmm. that not not just the reduction in premium but you know the whole nhcx coming into into the for because mm -hmm. we've seen how digi locker has done right mm -hmm. that's also working on a similar model where right. you feed in your aadhar and uh, through this uh, digi yatra took place right, right. digi yatra now it, it is made checking in into your uh, airports pretty simple correct so i i have seen that the adoption was pretty pretty quick here in india hmm. now only time will tell that if the insurance companies and the hospitals would go in for a model like national hmm. health claims exchange as you see folks that there are a lot of moving parts when you consider getting an insurance now if you are in the market to purchase an insurance let me tell you why you should consider ditto as your trusted advisory platform we have a backing by zeroda and a 4.9 over 5 stellar rating on google we don't spam and we only believe in trusted advisors so if you are looking for an insurance or you are in the market to explore about insurance then consider checking the link in the description and book a free of cost consultation call with one of our advisors right. now folks uh you've heard this discussion this i can say preliminary discussion on the national health claims exchange with the knowledge that we could scour off from the government websites if you have any questions uh drop them in the comment section below and supreet and i will do our homework and <laughs> get back to you but uh, if you like this video then consider dropping a like and smash that subscribe button and like always friends happy insurance hunting